Your mom's worst wedding. Story one. I wasn't exactly thrilled when I found out that my mom was remarried. My parents had been divorced for years, and while I had always hoped they might get back together, my mom's new guy, Dan, was, well, he was okay, but not someone I saw as stepdad material. They had only been dating for about a year, and I felt like everything was happening way too fast. The wedding day arrived, and I tried my best to be supportive. My mom looked beautiful in her white dress, her smile bright despite the tension I could feel from her. Dan seemed nervous which I chalked up to pre-wedding jitters. The ceremony was set in a small, picturesque chapel, and the guests, mostly family and close friends, filled the pews. As we were getting ready to walk down the aisle, my mom turned to me and whispered, I need to talk to you, sweetie. She pulled me into a small side room and closed the door. What's wrong, mom? I asked, worried. I don't think I can do this, she said, her eyes welling up with tears. I'm making a huge mistake. I was stunned. What do you mean? It's your wedding day. I know, I know. But I've been having doubts for a while now. I just thought I was being silly, but, but what? I found out Dan has been hiding things from me. Financial problems, debts, and even some legal issues. I just found out last night. Why didn't you tell anyone? I was embarrassed and scared, but I can't go through with this. I don't love him the way I should. I was just lonely. I hugged her, trying to comfort her. It's okay, Mom. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. We can leave right now. She took a deep breath and nodded. You're right. Let's go. We slipped out the back door of the chapel, avoiding the guests and Dan. We drove away leaving the wedding and the life she almost stepped into behind us. It was tough explaining everything to the guests later, and Dan was furious, but my mom felt a huge sense of relief. In the end, she realized that it's better to be alone than to be with the wrong person. And as her daughter, I couldn't have been prouder of her decision. Story 2. My mom's third wedding was an event I'll never forget, for all the wrong reasons. The first two marriages ended in disaster, but she swore this time would be different. John, the new groom, was charming, successful, and seemed to adore her. But from the start, I had a bad feeling about him. On the day of the wedding, everything looked perfect. The venue was a beautiful beachside resort. The decorations were stunning, and the guests were all excited. My mom was a vision in her dress. But as the ceremony began, I noticed something off. She looked distracted, almost as if she was miles away. When the officiant asked if anyone had any objections, the silence was deafened. My heart pounded in my chest, hoping no one would say anything. But then, out of nowhere, my mom spoke up. I do, she said, her voice trembling. The crowd gasped. John looked shocked, and I felt my stomach drop. Mom, what are you doing? I whispered urgently. I can't do this, she said, tears streaming down her face. John, I'm sorry. I thought I could, but I just can't. The guests were in an uproar, whispering and speculating. John's face turned red with anger and embarrassment. What the hell is this, Marcy? He demanded. I'm sorry, John. I can't marry you. I don't love you she said, her voice breaking. With that, she turned and ran down the aisle, her dress billowing behind her. I chased after her, finding her on the beach, sobbing uncontrollably. Mom, what's going on? I asked, trying to understand. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought if I married John, everything would be okay. But it's not. I don't love him, and I can't pretend anymore. I hugged her, feeling her pain. It's okay, Mom. You don't have to marry him. We'll figure it out. John didn't take the rejection well. He left the resort in a rage, and the guests were left to deal with the aftermath. My mom and I stayed in our room, avoiding everyone. It was a mess, but in the end, she knew she made the right decision. She realized that sometimes, it's better to walk away than to settle for less than you deserve. It took her a while to heal, but she eventually found happiness on her own terms. Story 3 My mom's worst wedding experience was when she married her second husband, Frank. From the beginning, I had reservations about him. He seemed nice enough but something about him always felt off. They had a whirlwind romance, and before we knew it, they were engaged. The wedding day was a grand affair, held at a luxurious hotel. My mom looked radiant in her gown, and despite my doubts, I hoped everything would work out for her. The ceremony went smoothly, and the reception was in full swing when things took a turn for the worse. Frank had been drinking heavily throughout the night. As the speeches began, he got up, swaying slightly, and took the microphone. His face was flushed, and I could tell he was about to say something he'd regret. I want to thank everyone for coming, he slurred. But I've got something to get off my chest. The room fell silent. My mom's smile faltered as she watched him, confusion and worry in her eyes. I've been keeping a secret, Frank continued. I've been seeing someone else. I thought I could stop, but I can't. I'm sorry, Marcy, but I'm in love with her. Gasps echoed through the room. My mom's face went pale and tears welled up in her eyes. She stood frozen, unable to process what was happening. I don't know why I went through with this. Frank said, his voice cracking. I thought I could make it work, but I can't live a lie. With that, he dropped the microphone and stumbled out of the room. My mom collapsed into a chair, sobbing uncontrollably. I rushed to her side, holding her as she cried. The guests were in shock, 
murmuring among themselves. The reception quickly dissolved into chaos as people tried to figure out what to do. I helped my mom back to our hotel room, where she spent the night crying and trying to understand how everything had gone so wrong. In the end, the marriage was annulled, and my mom was left to pick up the pieces of her shattered heart. It took her a long time to recover from the betrayal, but she eventually found the strength to move on. She learned the hard way that it's better to be alone than to be with someone who doesn't truly love you. And while it was a painful lesson, it made her stronger in the end. Story 4 My mom's worst wedding experience was with her first husband, Bill. They had been high school sweethearts, and everyone thought they were the perfect couple. But as their wedding day approached, I started to notice signs that something was wrong. On the morning of the wedding, my mom was a bundle of nerves. She kept asking if anyone had seen Bill, but no one had. The ceremony was supposed to start at 2 p.m., and by 1.30, he was still nowhere to be found. Guests started to arrive, and my mom's anxiety grew. I tried to reassure her, but I was just as worried. At 2 p.m., with no sign of Bill, we decided to delay the ceremony for a bit, hoping he would show up. An hour passed, and still no Bill. My mom was in tears, and the guests were getting restless. Finally, at 3.30 p.m., my dad, who had been searching for Bill, came back with news. He's not coming, he said, looking devastated. I found a note in his apartment. He's gone. My mom broke down, sobbing uncontrollably. The guests were in shock, and I felt my own heart break for her. She had been so excited for this day, and now it was all falling apart. We gathered our family and close friends and tried to comfort her, but nothing could ease her pain. The wedding was called off, and the guests slowly left, murmuring about the shocking turn of events. It took my mom a long time to recover from that day. She never really got over the betrayal, but she eventually moved on and found happiness again. Bill never contacted her, and we never found out why he left. She learned that sometimes the people you think you know best can surprise you in the worst ways. And while it was a painful experience, it made her stronger and more cautious in the future. Story 5 My mom's worst wedding was a day that started out beautifully, but ended in heartbreak. She was marrying her second husband, Steve a man who seemed perfect in every way. They had been together for three years, and I thought they were truly in love. The wedding was held at a gorgeous vineyard with rolling hills and lush greenery as the backdrop. My mom looked stunning in her dress, and Steve was handsome in his tuxedo. Everything was perfect, until it wasn't. As we were getting ready to walk down the aisle, Steve suddenly pulled me aside. His face was pale, and he looked like he was about to be sick. I can't do this, he said, his voice trembling. What do you mean? I asked my heart sinking. I'm not ready. I thought I was, but I'm not. I can't marry your mom. I was stunned. Steve, you can't be serious. Everyone's here. She's waiting for you. I know, and I'm sorry, but I can't go through with it. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving me standing there in shock. I didn't know what to do. My mom was waiting at the end of the aisle, looking radiant and expectant. I took a deep breath and walked back to her. Mom, we need to talk. Her face fell. What is it? Steve's gone. He said he can't go through with it. She looked at me, disbelief and heartbreak written all over her face. What? I'm so sorry, Mom. She started to cry, her shoulders shaking with sobs. The guests were starting to murmur, sensing that something was wrong. I took her hand and led her away from the aisle, trying to shield her from the curious stares. We spent the rest of the day in our hotel room, trying to make sense of what had happened. My mom was devastated, and I felt helpless to ease her pain. The guests eventually left, and we were left to pick up the pieces of a day that should have been filled with joy. It took my mom a long time to recover from that day. She never really understood why Steve had left, and the unanswered questions haunted her, but she eventually found peace and moved on, stronger and more resilient than before. She learned that sometimes even the most perfect-seeming relationships can fall apart, and while it was a painful lesson, it made her appreciate the love and stability she found later in life. Story 6 My mom's worst wedding experience was a disaster from start to finish. She was marrying her third husband, Tom a man who had a penchant for drinking a little too much. The signs were there, but my mom was in love and convinced herself that things would change. The wedding took place at a charming countryside inn, with a beautiful garden for the ceremony and a cozy reception hall. Everything seemed perfect as the guests gathered. The weather was lovely, and my mom looked stunning in her dress. But as the day went on, Tom's drinking became more and more apparent. By the time the ceremony started, Tom was already tipsy. He stumbled through his vows, slurring his words and giggling inappropriately. My mom tried to smile through it, but I could see the tension in her eyes. The guests exchanged uncomfortable glances, whispering among themselves. At the reception, things went from bad to worse. Tom continued to drink heavily, and his behavior became increasingly erratic. During the best man's speech, he interrupted several times, making crude jokes and embarrassing my mom. He spilled red wine on her dress and laughed it off as a joke. When it came time for the first dance, Tom could barely stand. He stepped on my mom's feet, 
nearly knocked her over and eventually collapsed on the dance floor, unable to get up. The guests were horrified and my mom was mortified. The final straw came when Tom tried to make a drunken toast. He raised his glass, swaying dangerously, and started to speak. Here's to my beautiful wife, he slurred, who looks almost as good as my ex. There was a collective gasp from the guests. My mom's face turned red with anger and humiliation. She stormed out of the reception hall, tears streaming down her face. I followed her, trying to comfort her as best I could. Tom was eventually helped out by his friends, and the reception came to an awkward end. My mom spent the rest of the night in her room, crying and trying to make sense of what had happened. The marriage didn't last long after that, and Tom's drinking continued to be a problem. Story 7. My mom's wedding to her second husband, Carl, was supposed to be a joyous occasion. Carl was kind, successful, and seemed to love my mom dearly. But there was one major problem. His mother, Edith. Edith was overbearing, controlling, and had a knack for making everything about herself. From the moment the wedding planning started, she insisted on being involved in every detail. She criticized my mom's choice of dress, the venue, the flowers, and even the guest list. My mom tried to stand her ground, but Edith was relentless. On the day of the wedding, the tension was palpable. My mom looked beautiful, but there was a strained look in her eyes. Edith, dressed in an elaborate gown that nearly outshone the brides, was everywhere, barking orders and making sure everything was to her liking. As the ceremony began, Edith made her presence known. She loudly commented on every part of the service, from the music to the vows. When it came time for the rings, she interrupted insisting that Carl use a ring she had picked out instead of the one my mom had chosen. At the reception, Edith continued to dominate. She took over the microphone during the speeches, giving a long-winded toast that was more about her and Carl's childhood than the couple's future. She critiqued the food, the music, and even the seating arrangements. The final straw came when Edith demanded a special dance with Carl, pushing my mom aside. As they danced, Edith whispered something in Carl's ear that made his face go pale. My mom watched from the sidelines, her joy slowly turning to despair. By the end of the night, my mom was in tears. Carl tried to comfort her, but it was clear that Edith's influence was too strong. The marriage didn't last long, with Edith constantly interfering and causing friction between my mom and Carl. Story 8. My mom's wedding to her first husband, Dave, was a day filled with unexpected drama. They had dated throughout college, and everyone thought they were the perfect couple. But lurking in the background was Dave's ex-girlfriend, Lisa, who had never quite let go of their relationship. The wedding was held at a picturesque church, followed by a reception at a nearby hall. My mom was radiant, and Dave looked genuinely happy. Everything seemed to be going smoothly until the reception. Halfway through the evening, Lisa showed up uninvited. She was clearly intoxicated, stumbling through the doors and making a scene. The guests were taken aback, and my mom's face turned white when she saw her. Lisa marched up to Dave, ignoring everyone else, and started yelling at him. How could you marry her? She screamed. You're supposed to be with me! Dave tried to calm her down, but she wasn't having it. She slapped him across the face, causing a collective gasp from the guests. My mom stood frozen, unable to comprehend what was happening. Lisa then turned to my mom, her eyes filled with hatred. You'll never make him happy, she spat. He's mine! Security was called, and Lisa was escorted out, still screaming obscenities. The mood of the reception was shattered, and my mom spent the rest of the night trying to hold back her tears. Dave tried to reassure her, but the damage was done. The incident cast a shadow over their marriage. Trust issues and insecurities plagued their relationship, and they eventually divorced a few years later. Story 9 One of the most heartbreaking weddings I've ever witnessed was my mom's wedding to her third fiancé, Jeff. They had been together for two years, and everyone thought they were a perfect match. But on the day of the wedding, things took a devastating turn. The ceremony was set to take place in a beautiful garden, with friends and family gathered to celebrate. My mom looked stunning in her dress, her eyes sparkling with excitement. But as the minutes ticked by... There was no sign of Jeff. Guests started to murmur, checking their watches and whispering among themselves. My mom's excitement slowly turned to anxiety. She kept asking if anyone had seen Jeff, but no one had. Finally, after an hour of waiting, one of Jeff's friends came forward with a note. It was from Jeff, explaining that he couldn't go through with the wedding. He had left town and didn't know when he'd be back. My mom's face crumbled as she read the note. Tears streamed down her cheeks, and she dropped the letter, unable to speak. The guests were in shock, unsure of what to do. I rushed to her side, trying to console her but there was little I could say to ease her pain. The ceremony was called off, and the guests slowly left, offering their condolences. My mom spent the next few days in a daze, trying to understand why Jeff had left her. It took her a long time to recover from the betrayal. Story 10. My mom's wedding to her second husband, Mike, was doomed from the start, though none of us realized it until the big day. They had met through mutual friends, 
and their relationship had progressed quickly. Mike seemed charming and reliable, and my mom fell head over heels for him. The wedding was a grand affair, held at a luxurious hotel with hundreds of guests. My mom was glowing, and Mike appeared to be the perfect groom. But behind the scenes, a scandal was brewing. During the reception, one of Mike's friends, clearly intoxicated, let slip a shocking secret. Mike had been having an affair with his secretary, and it had been going on for months. The friend, unaware of the microphone nearby, loudly recounted the sordid details to a small group of guests. Words spread like wildfire, and it wasn't long before it reached my mom. She confronted Mike, who initially denied everything. But when pressed, he admitted to the affair, trying to downplay it as a meaningless fling. My mom was devastated. In front of all their guests, she slapped Mike and stormed out of the reception hall. The party came to an abrupt halt as guests watched the drama unfold, unsure of what to do. I found my mom in her hotel room, sobbing uncontrollably. She felt humiliated and betrayed, unable to understand how Mike could do this to her. The marriage was annulled shortly after, and Mike's reputation was ruined. Story 11. My mom's wedding to her first husband, Alan, was the most bizarre and surreal experience of my life. They had been dating for a few years and decided to tie the knot in a grand ceremony at a historic mansion. Everything was meticulously planned, and my mom was ecstatic, looking forward to spending the rest of her life with Alan. The ceremony started off beautiful. My mom walked down the aisle looking radiant, and Alan stood at the altar, beaming. They exchanged vows, and everything seemed perfect. However, during the reception, things took a strange turn. After the toasts, Alan excused himself to go to the bath. 20 minutes passed, then 30, and Alan still hadn't returned. Guests started to notice, and a quiet murmur spread through the crowd. My mom looked worried but tried to stay calm, thinking maybe he was just feeling unwell. An hour later, Alan was still missing. Panic set in, and a search party was organized. We checked every room in the mansion, the gardens, and even the parking lot, but Alan was nowhere to be found. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. As the night wore on, my mom's worry turned to despair. Guests began to leave, and the joyous atmosphere of the wedding had completely evaporated. My mom sat in a corner, her beautiful white dress now a stark contrast to her tear-streaked face. We called the police, fearing the worst, but it turned out that Alan had left of his own accord. He had booked a flight and disappeared to another state, leaving my mom bewildered and heartbroken. The news spread quickly, and my mom became the subject of gossip and pity. Story 12. My mom's second wedding to Richard was supposed to be a fresh start after her first marriage ended in divorce. Richard was charming, successful, and seemingly devoted to her. But as their wedding day approached, I started noticing signs of his controlling behavior. The wedding was held in a beautiful garden with an elegant reception to follow. My mom looked stunning, but there was a nervous energy about her that I couldn't ignore. Richard was constantly by her side, monitoring her every move, making sure everything went according to his plan. During the ceremony, Richard's controlling nature became even more apparent. He corrected my mom's vows in front of everyone, insisting she say them exactly as he had written. My mom looked embarrassed and flustered but complied, trying to avoid making a scene. At the reception, Richard continued to dominate. He decided who could speak to my mom, what she could eat, and even when she could dance. Every time she tried to have a moment with friends or family, he would pull her away, making it clear that she belonged to him now. The final straw came during the first dance. Richard had choreographed an elaborate routine and became visibly angry when my mom missed a step. He whispered harshly in her ear, and I could see the tears welling up in her eyes. The guests were uncomfortable, whispering among themselves about Richard's behavior. My mom tried to put on a brave face, but it was clear she was miserable. The wedding ended on a sour note, with many guests leaving early. A few months into the marriage, my mom confided in me that Richard's controlling behavior had only gotten worse. She felt trapped and isolated, unable to make even the smallest decisions without his approval. The marriage eventually ended in a bitter divorce. Story 13. My mom's third wedding to Paul was doomed from the start. They had met online and had a whirlwind romance that quickly led to an engagement. Despite my reservations about how fast everything was moving, my mom was convinced that Paul was her soulmate. The wedding was held at a charming countryside inn with a small group of close friends and family. My mom looked beautiful, and Paul seemed happy, but there was an underlying tension that I couldn't quite put my finger on. As the ceremony began, Paul's ex-wife, Lisa, showed up uninvited. She was furious and made a scene, shouting accusations at Paul about his infidelity and dishonesty. The guests were shocked, and my mom was devastated. Paul tried to calm Lisa down, but she was relentless, detailing every lie and betrayal he had committed during their marriage. My mom stood there, tears streaming down her face as her dream wedding turned into a nightmare. Lisa was eventually escorted out, but the damage was done. My mom couldn't go through with the ceremony, 
and the wedding was called off. The guests left, murmuring about the shocking turn of events, and my mom spent the night crying in her hotel room. Paul tried to apologize and explain, but my mom couldn't trust him anymore. The relationship ended shortly after, leaving my mom heartbroken and wary of future relationships. Story 14 my mom's fourth wedding was a low-key affair compared to her previous one. She had met Mark at a local community event, and they quickly fell in love. The wedding was small, held at a quaint bed and breakfast, with just a few close friends and family. Everything seemed to be going well until the reception. Mark's best man, Jake, got drunk and started making inappropriate comments during his speech. He joked about Mark's past relationships, hinted at infidelities, and made crude remarks that left the guests uncomfortable. My mom tried to laugh it off, but I could see the hurt in her eyes. Mark, instead of stopping Jake, joined in the laughter, making the situation even worse. The atmosphere quickly turned sour, and the guests started to leave early. The final blow came when Jake spilled a drink on my mom's dress and laughed it off as a joke. My mom had had enough. She confronted Mark, demanding that he take control of the situation, but he brushed her off, saying she was overreacting. Feeling humiliated and unsupported, my mom left the reception in tears. She spent the rest of the night alone in her room, questioning her decision to marry Mark. The marriage didn't last long, with Mark's lack of support and respect becoming a recurring issue. Story 15 My mom's fifth wedding was an event no one could forget. She was marrying her longtime boyfriend, Tim, after several years of dating. They seemed happy together, and everyone thought this would finally be the one that lasted. The wedding was a grand affair held at a luxurious hotel. My mom looked stunning in her dress, and the decorations were exquisite. But as the ceremony time approached, there was no sign of Tim. The guests started to get restless, and my mom grew more anxious by the minute. Finally, one of Tim's friends arrived, looking flustered. He pulled my mom aside and explained that Tim had cold feet and wasn't coming. My mom was devastated. She couldn't believe that Tim would do this to her. She tried to stay composed, but the tears started flowing. The guests were in shock, and the whispers spread like wildfire. Despite the chaos, my mom decided to go ahead with the reception. She didn't want all the planning and money to go to waste. The atmosphere was somber, and the guests tried to make the best of a bad situation. Tim eventually called, apologizing profusely, but the damage was done. My mom couldn't forgive him for abandoning her on their wedding day. The relationship ended, and my mom was left to pick up the pieces of her shattered heart. Story 16. My mom's sixth wedding was to a man named Jerry, whom she met through mutual friends. They had a whirlwind romance and decided to get married after just a year of dating. The wedding was set in a beautiful vineyard, and everything seemed perfect until it wasn't. The ceremony went smoothly, and the reception started with joyous celebration. But things took a turn when Jerry's ex-girlfriend, Karen, showed up uninvited. She had heard about the wedding and decided to crash it. I was talking to some guests when I saw her storm in, her eyes locked on Jerry. My heart sank. This was going to be bad. Jerry! Karen shouted, causing everyone to turn and look. You really thought you could marry someone else and I wouldn't find out? Jerry's face turned pale. Karen, what are you doing here? Karen ignored his question and marched straight up to my mom. Did he tell you about us? How we were together for three years and he just left me without any explanation? My mom, trying to stay composed, replied, I know about your past, Karen, but that was years ago. We're happy now, Karen scoffed. Happy? You think he's changed? He'll do the same to you, just wait. Jerry stepped in, trying to defuse the situation. Karen, please, let's not do this here. This is our wedding day. Your wedding day? Karen laughed bitterly. This should have been our wedding day. My mom, unable to take it anymore, turned to Jerry. Is this true? Did you just leave her without a word? Jerry stammered. I... I didn't know how to end it properly. It was a mistake. A mistake? Karen yelled. You ruined my life, Jerry! The guests were watching in stunned silence. My mom's eyes filled with tears. I can't do this! She whispered and ran out of the reception hall. I followed her, trying to comfort her as she cried. Jerry eventually came after us but my mom couldn't look at him. The wedding was over, and so was their relationship. Story 17. My mom's seventh wedding was supposed to be a quiet, intimate affair. She was marrying Richard, a kind and gentle man who adored her. The ceremony was held in our backyard, with only close friends and family in attendance. But it didn't take long for things to unravel. During the reception, my mom's brother, Uncle Bob, had a little too much to drink. He had never liked Richard and took the opportunity to voice his grievances. So, Richard, Bob slurred, you think you're good enough for my sister? Richard, trying to stay polite, replied, I love your sister very much, Bob. I'll do my best to make her happy. Your best? Bob sneered. Your best isn't good enough. You're a joke. Bob, that's enough! My mom interjected, trying to calm the situation. No, Marcy, Bob continued, ignoring her. You deserve better than this loser. 
He's not even half the man your first husband was. Richard's face reddened with anger and embarrassed. Bob, I understand you're protective of your sister, but this isn't the time or place for this conversation. Bob stood up, swaying slightly. I'll tell you what's not the time or place. This whole damn wedding. It's a farce. Uncle Bob, stop it, I shouted, stepping between him and Richard. But Bob wouldn't back down. No, she needs to hear this. Marcy, you're making a mistake. This guy isn't right for you. My mom, tears streaming down her face, shouted back, Bob, you don't get to decide what's right for me. I love Richard, and that's all that matters. Bob shook his head. You're making a mistake, Marcy, a big one. With that, he stumbled out of the yard, leaving a stunned silence in his wake. The mood was ruined, and my mom was heartbroken. She and Richard tried to salvage the evening, but the damage was done. Story 18. My mom's eighth wedding was to a man named Paul, who had two teenage children from a previous marriage. My mom, ever the optimist, was excited about blending our families. The wedding was held at a charming inn, and everything seemed to be going well. Until the reception. Paul's daughter Emily had been giving my mom the cold shoulder since they met. During the father-daughter dance, Emily decided to air her grievances. Dad, why are you marrying her? Emily asked loudly, causing everyone to look their way. Paul, taken aback, replied, Emily, this isn't the time. We'll talk about this later. No, we'll talk about it now, Emily insisted. She's not our mom. She'll never be our mom. My mom, hearing this, tried to intervene. Emily, I know I'm not your mom. I just want us to be a family. Emily glared at her. We don't need a new family. We were fine before you came along. Paul tried to calm his daughter. Emily, please. This is our wedding day. Emily shook her head, tears in her eyes. I don't want this. I don't want you to marry her. With that, she ran out of the reception hall, leaving everyone in stunned silence. Paul looked at my mom, torn between his new wife and his daughter. My mom tried to smile, but the pain was evident in her eyes. The rest of the reception was a somber affair. My mom and Paul tried to put on a brave face, but the tension was palp. The joy of the day had been overshadowed by the family conflict. Story 19. My mom's ninth wedding was to a man named George, who seemed perfect on the surface. He was charming, successful, and treated my mom like a queen. The wedding was a lavish event, held at a luxurious hotel with hundreds of guests. During the reception, one of George's old friends, clearly drunk, decided to make a speech. It started off innocently enough, but soon took a dark turn. I've known George for years the friend began, swaying slightly. And let me tell you, Marcy, you're in for a surprise. The guest chuckled nervously, and my mom shot a worried glance at George. What are you talking about, Bill? George asked, trying to keep his cool. Bill smirked. Oh, come on, George. You haven't told her about the gambling debts? The bankruptcy? The fact that you're flat broke? A collective gasp went through the room. My mom's face turned white. Is this true, George? George stammered. Marcy, I was going to tell you, but I didn't want to ruin the wedding. My mom stood up, her voice shaking. So, you thought lying to me was better? It's not like that, George pleaded. I'm sorting things out. Bill laughed bitterly. Good luck with that. You've been saying that for years. My mom, tears streaming down her face, turned and walked out of the reception hall. George followed her, begging for forgiveness, but the trust had been shattered. Story 20. My mom's 10th wedding was to Raj, a man from India whom she had met at work. They fell in love quickly, and despite their cultural differences, they decided to get married. The wedding was a fusion of Western and Indian traditions, held at a beautiful estate. The ceremony went smoothly, but tensions rose during the reception. Raj's parents, who had flown in from India, were not pleased with the wedding arrangements. They found the Western aspects disrespectful to their traditions. During the dinner, Raj's mother, Priya, confronted my mom. This is not how a wedding should be, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. Our traditions have been ignored. My mom, trying to stay calm, replied, Priya! We tried to incorporate both cults. We wanted to respect everyone's traditions. Priya shook her head. You've disrespected us. This is not how things are done in our family. Raj, seeing the confrontation, stepped in. Mother, please. Marcy and I planned this together. We wanted to honor both of our backgrounds. Priya glared at him. You have shamed our family, Raj. This wedding is a disgrace. My mom, tears welling up, said. We tried our best. We just wanted everyone to be happy. Priya scoffed. Happiness? You have no idea what it means to honor your heritage. The rest of the reception was tense and uncomfortable. Guests whispered among themselves, and my mom felt increasingly isolated. The cultural clash had created a rift that was hard to bridge. Story 21. My mom's 11th wedding was to a man named Jim, whom she had met through a mutual friend. Jim seemed like a good match for her, and they decided to get married in a charming country church. Everything was going smoothly until an unexpected guest arrived. During the reception, a woman burst through the doors, her face flushed with anger. She stormed up to Jim, causing everyone to fall silent. 
You really thought you could get married without telling me? She shouted. Jim's face went pale. Jessica, what are you doing here? Jessica glared at him. I'm here to stop this sham. Did you tell her about us? How you promised me we'd be together? My mom's face turned white. Jim, who is this? Jim stammered. Marcy, I, I was with Jessica before we met. It was over, I swear. Jessica scoffed. Over? You told me you loved me just last month. Gasps echoed through the room. My mom looked at Jim, tears welling up in her eyes. Is this true? Jim tried to explain, but the damage was done. My mom, feeling humiliated and betrayed, ran out of the reception hall. I followed her, trying to offer comfort, but her heartbreak was palpable. The marriage was annulled soon after. Story 22. My mom's 12th wedding was to a man named Peter, whom she had met at a charity event. The wedding was held at a beautiful lakeside venue, and everything seemed perfect. However, during the reception, Peter's best man, Steve, made a toast that went horribly wrong. Steve, clearly drunk, stood up and tapped his glass. I've known Peter for years, and I've never seen him so... whipped, he began, slurring his words. Peter's face reddened. Steve, sit down, he hissed. But Steve continued, oblivious. I mean, Marcy, you've got him wrapped around your finger. Remember that time you cheated on your ex, Peter? The room went silent. My mom's face flushed with embarrassment and anger. What are you talking about, Steve? Steve laughed. Oh, come on. Everyone knows you were still seeing your ex when you met Peter. Peter tried to intervene. That's enough, Steve. But Steve was on a roll. And Peter, you're no saint either. How many times did you say you'd never get married again? My mom stood up, tears streaming down her face. Peter, is this true? Peter, looking defeated, nodded slightly. It was a long time ago, Marcy. Feeling betrayed, my mom ran out of the hall. The guests sat in awkward silence, unsure of what to do. The marriage ended shortly after, with trust issues that couldn't be resolved. Story 23. My mom's 13th wedding was to a man named Thomas, who had always been shy and reserved. The wedding was held at a small, intimate chapel with close friends and family. Everything was going well until it was time for the vows. Thomas, standing at the altar, suddenly froze. His face turned pale, and he began to sweat profusely. The officiant prompted him, Thomas, please repeat after me. But Thomas couldn't speak. He stood there, mute, as the guests shifted uncomfortably in their seats. My mom whispered, Thomas, are you okay? He shook his head, his eyes wide with panic. I, I can't do this, he finally choked out. Gasps echoed through the chapel. My mom's heart sank. What do you mean? I can't, I can't marry you, Thomas stammered. I'm not ready. Tears welled up in my mom's eyes. Thomas, please, we've come so far. I'm sorry, Marcy, he said, backing away. I can't go through with it. The guests were in shock as Thomas turned and fled the chapel. My mom stood at the altar devastated and humiliated. The wedding was called off and the relationship ended soon after. Story 24. My mom's 14th wedding was to a man named Gary, who had been married twice before. The ceremony was held at a beautiful garden venue, and everything seemed perfect. But during the reception, Gary's ex-wife, Lisa, showed up uninvited and caused a scene. Lisa, clearly drunk, stormed up to the newlyweds. You think you can replace me? She slurred, pointing a shaky finger at my mom. Gary's face turned red. Lisa, you need to leave. Lisa laughed bitterly. Oh, now you want me to leave? After all the times you begged me to stay? My mom, trying to stay composed, asked, Gary, what is she talking about? Gary sighed. Marcy, Lisa's just trying to cause trouble. Lisa scoffed. Trouble? You mean like the time you begged me to take you back just last month? The guests gasped. My mom's face turned pale. Is this true, Gary? Gary looked defeated. Marcy, I was confused. It's over now. Tears welled up in my mom's eyes. I can't believe this, she whispered and ran out of the reception hall. The marriage didn't last long after that, with the trust shattered beyond repair. Story 25. My mom's 15th wedding was to a man named Robert. They had been together for a few years and seemed to be a perfect match. The wedding was planned to be a grand event at a historic mansion, but it never happened. The night before the wedding, my mom received an anonymous letter. It was filled with details about Robert's secret life, including another family he had kept hidden. Devastated, she confronted him. Robert, what is this? She asked, holding up the letter. Robert's face went white. Marcy, I can explain. Explain? Explain how you have another family? She shouted. I was going to tell you, he stammered. I just didn't know how. Tears streamed down her face. When? After we were married? After I found out the hard way? I'm sorry, Marcy, he said, looking down. Sorry isn't enough, she replied, her voice shaking with anger and betrayal. I can't marry you. The wedding was called off, and the guests were notified. My mom spent the day alone trying to process the betrayal. The relationship ended immediately, leaving her to pick up the pieces of her shattered dreams. Story 26. My mom's 16th wedding was to a man named Michael. They were both older, having experienced their fair share of life's ups and downs, 
and they seemed perfect for each other. The wedding was a small, intimate affair at a local church. Everything was going smoothly until the part of the ceremony where they were supposed to exchange rings. The best man, Mark, was responsible for the rings, and when the officiant asked for them, Mark's face went pale. I... I can't find them, Mark stammered, frantically patting his pockets. The congregation gasped. My mom and Michael looked at each other in shock. What do you mean you can't find them? Michael asked, trying to stay calm. I had them right here, Mark said, pulling out his pockets to show they were empty. The officiant tried to lighten the mood. Well, it looks like we have a bit of a situation here. My mom, trying to keep her composure, said, It's okay. We can use a placeholder. Michael nodded. But it was clear the moment had been marred. After the ceremony, Mark found the rings. He had left them in the car. The incident cast a shadow over the rest of the day, but my mom and Michael tried to make the best of it. Story 27. My mom's 17th wedding was to a man named Steve. They had a lot in common and seemed genuinely happy together. The wedding was a beautiful beach ceremony, followed by a reception at a seaside restaurant. During the reception, an argument broke out between Steve's brother, Tom, and one of my mom's friends, Lisa. They had never gotten along, but no one expected things to get physical. Why don't you mind your own business? Tom shouted, clearly drunk. Lisa, equally intoxicated, fired back. Why don't you grow up and stop ruining everyone's night? Before anyone could intervene, Tom threw a punch, and the two started brawling in the middle of the dance. Guests screamed and tried to pull them apart. My mom and Steve rushed over, trying to calm things down. Tom, stop it! Steve yelled, grabbing his brother. Lisa was pulled away by a few other guests, her dress torn and makeup smeared. The mood was completely ruined and many guests left early. My mom spent the rest of the night trying to make sure everyone was okay, but the damage was done. Story 28. My mom's 18th wedding was to a man named John. They had a whirlwind romance and decided to get married after just six months. The wedding was set in a picturesque chapel in the mountains. As the ceremony began, everything seemed perfect. My mom walked down the aisle, her face glowing with happiness. But when it came time for her to say her vows, she froze. I, I can't do this, she said her voice barely above a whisper. John looked confused. Marcy, what's wrong? Tears started to stream down her face. I'm sorry, John. I thought I was ready, but I'm not. The guests gasped, and whispers spread through the chapel. My mom turned and ran down the aisle, leaving everyone stunned. I found her outside, sitting on a bench, crying. Mom, what happened? She looked up at me, her eyes filled with pain. I thought I could do it, but I just can't. I'm not over the past. John came out, his face a mix of anger and sadness. Marcy, why didn't you tell me? I didn't realize until now, she said, wiping her tears. I'm so sorry. The wedding was canceled, and the guests were sent home. My mom and John tried to talk things through, but it was clear that the relationship couldn't survive the day's events. Story 29. My mom's 19th wedding was to a man named Frank. They decided to have an outdoor wedding in a beautiful park with a catered picnic-style reception. It sounded perfect, but it quickly turned into a nightmare. When the catering company arrived, it was clear that there had been a mix-up. Instead of the gourmet picnic they had ordered, the food was a chaotic assortment of dishes that looked more suited for a child's birthday party. Where's the charcuterie board? The lobster rolls? My mom asked, panic in her voice. The caterer, looking flustered, replied, I'm sorry, there must have been a mistake. This is what was delivered to us. Frank tried to keep the mood light. It's okay, we'll make do. But as guests started to eat, it became apparent that the food wasn't just the wrong type. It was awful. The potato salad was sour, the sandwiches were soggy, and the desserts were melted. People started to leave early, and my mom was beside herself with embarrassment. This was supposed to be perfect, she kept saying. Frank tried to reassure her, but the day was ruined. They ended up having to apologize to their guests and promise to make it up to them somehow. The mishap put a strain on their relationship, but they managed to pull through. Story 30. My mom's 20th wedding was to a man named Brian. They had been together for a few years, and their relationship seemed solid. The wedding was a grand event at a historic estate, with hundreds of guests. During the reception, Brian's sister Katie stood up to make a toast. She seemed nervous, but no one could have predicted what she was about to say. I just want to say that I'm happy for my brother, Katie began, her voice shaking. But there's something everyone needs to know. Brian's face turned pale. Katie, don't, he warned. Katie ignored him and continued, Brian has been keeping a secret from all of us. He's already married. The room erupted in gasps and whispers. My mom looked at Brian, her face a mix of confusion and betrayal. Is this true? Brian hung his head. Yes, it's true. I'm still legally married. I was going to finalize the divorce, but my mom stood up, tears streaming down her face. How could you do this to me? To us? Brian tried to explain, but my mom wasn't listening. She ran out of the room and I followed her, trying to offer comfort. The wedding was immediately called off, 
and guests left in shock. My mom spent the next few days trying to come to terms with the betrayal. The relationship ended, and she was left to pick up the pieces once again. Story 31 my mom's 21st wedding was to a man named Mark. They had met at a charity event and quickly fell in love. The wedding was a small, intimate ceremony in a cozy chapel, with close friends and family in attendance. Everything was going perfectly until the officiant asked for the marriage license. My mom and Mark exchanged worried glances. I thought you had it, my mom whispered. Mark shook his head. I thought you did, the officiant frowned. Without the license, we can't proceed. Panic set in. They searched through their bags, asked the guests if anyone had seen it, but it was nowhere to be found. My mom's best friend, Sarah, tried to lighten the mood. Well, I guess we'll just have to party without it. The guests laughed nervously, but the mood was clearly dampened. They decided to proceed with a symbolic ceremony, hoping to sort out the legalities later. The reception went on, but the excitement had waned. The missing license was eventually found, left at their apartment, but the moment was already lost. Story 32. My mom's 22nd wedding was to a man named Phil. They had a beautiful ceremony planned at a vineyard, with an elegant reception to follow. Everything seemed perfect until Phil's ex-girlfriend Linda showed up. Linda was clearly not over Phil. She caused a scene during the reception, yelling at my mom and accusing Phil of still being in love with her. You can't just replace me, Phil, Linda shouted, causing heads to turn. Phil tried to calm her down. Linda, you need to leave. Linda ignored him and turned to my mom. Do you know he called me last week, begging to get back together? My mom's face went pale. Is this true, Phil? Phil looked defeated. Marcy, it's not what it seems. Not what it seems, Linda scoffed. You begged me to take you back. Tears welled up in my mom's eyes. She ran out of the reception hall and I followed her, trying to comfort her. The wedding ended in chaos and the marriage didn't last long after that. Story 33, my mom's 23rd wedding was to a man named Raja. They had a beautiful fusion wedding planned, incorporating both Western and Indian traditions. The ceremony was a vibrant celebration of their cultures, held at a grand estate. However, tensions arose during the reception. Rajesh's parents were traditional and disapproved of many aspects of the Western elements in the wedding. This is not how we do things, Rajesh's mother Priya said disapprovingly. My mom tried to explain. We wanted to honor both our traditions. Priya shook her head. This is disrespectful to our heritage. Rajesh stepped in, trying to mediate. Mother, we wanted to include both cultures. But the damage was done. Priya's disapproval cast a shadow over the celebration making my mom feel like an outsider in her own wedding. The cultural clash created a rift that was difficult to bridge, leading to strain in their relationship. Story 34. My mom's 24th wedding was to a man named David. They had a lovely ceremony at a garden venue, followed by a reception in a charming hall. Everything was going well until the best man, Mike, decided to make a confession during his speech. I've known David for years, Mike began, and I've never seen him happier. But there's something I need to confess. David's face turned pale. Mike, what are you doing? Mike continued, ignoring David. David and I had a pact. If neither of us were married by 40, we'd marry each other. The guests gasped. My mom looked at David in shock. Is this true? David stammered. Marcy, it was a joke. A stupid joke. Mike laughed bitterly. A joke? You proposed to me, David. And now you're marrying her? My mom, feeling humiliated and betrayed, ran out of the hall. The guests were left in stunned silence, and the marriage was annulled shortly after. Story 35. My mom's 25th wedding was to a man named Kevin. They had been together for a few years and decided to have a grand wedding at a luxurious hotel. Everything was going perfectly until Kevin's ex-girlfriend, Jenny, showed up with a baby. This is Kevin's baby, Jenny announced, holding the child up for everyone to see. Kevin's face went white. Jenny, what are you doing here? Jenny glared at him. You need to take responsibility, Kevin. My mom looked at Kevin, her eyes wide with shock. Is this true? Kevin stammered. Marcy, I didn't know. I mean, I knew about the baby, but I didn't think she'd show up here. Jenny laughed bitterly. You didn't think I'd show up? You've been ignoring your son. The guests were in shock, and my mom was devastated. She turned to Kevin, tears streaming down her face. I can't believe you didn't tell me. Kevin tried to explain, but my mom was already walking out. The wedding was called off, and the relationship ended immediately. 